Greg grinned. I'm glad I made it home before you called the cops. Me too. Dare started to reach for his magenta raincoat, then hesitated and snapped his fingers. Oh, by the way, I heard you got your first babysitting gig. Glad you finally brought your old man around. It was really thanks to you. Once you threw your two cents in, it was three against one. I'm sitting for the McNally's kid next week. Jake? They need someone to watch him on Saturdays. No way. His mum and I go back, go way back. Maybe I'll stop by sometime, bring you guys a treat. Or bring my... Uh, bring by my new puppy. I've been thinking seriously about getting a dog. Really? Cool. Yeah. A friend has a Shih Tzu that's going to have puppies soon. I, I'm thinking I've been without a dog long enough. I miss having a dog to cuddle with. Greg laughed. Just be sure it's a nice Shih Tzu. I think the beast next door is part Shih Tzu. Um... That snaggletooth mongrel. Nah, no dog of mine will be like that, remember? Dare said, holding up his right index finger, on which he wore his favourite onyx and gold ring. I have the magic finger of luck, Dare and Greg said in unison. They laughed. The magic finger of luck had been an ongoing joke since Greg was about four years old. One day, Greg was crying because he wanted the stuffed octopus in a claw machine. He hadn't been able to get it when his mother put money in the machine, and he tried with a claw. Dare had tapped the glass of the claw machine with his right index finger and had said in a deep voice, I have the magic finger of luck. I will get you the octopus. And he had done it on the first try. After that, Dare called on the magic finger of luck to get things to go his way. It pretty much was. It pretty much always worked. Greg stopped laughing, thinking again about the neighbor's dog. Yeah, I still can't believe that thing bit me. The neighbor's next door had moved in the year before, and two days later, their dog, a small but evil mutt with very sharp teeth and one missing eye, charged out at Greg and bit him on the ankle. He had to have ten stitches. Okay, I'll go and leave you to your reading, Dare said. Before I go, though, let's make sure everything's working right. Fifteen minutes later, Greg was lounging on his double bed reading by the nice bright light of his red pendant reading lamp. Dare had gotten the family a power transfer system for the generator that hooked up to the breaker box. With the flip of a few switches, power was restored to the whole house. Got this especially for your gaming needs. Dare said before giving Greg another half hug, double fist bump, and leaving. Even though he really wanted to get to his reading, Greg took the time to do his nightly yoga rout routine before sliding under the oversized Afghan. Uh, Dare had knitted for him. Dare had also taught him yoga, and Greg loved it. It not only calmed him down before bed, it helped him stay in shape. Not that good shape was good enough. Uh, Greg stood in front of the mirror and examined his narrow shoulders and slight chest. Even though he had muscles in his arms and legs, his torso was still too thin. And his face... Greg's phone buzzed. He picked it up and looked at a text from Hadi. You recovered? Greg snorted. He... as if he was scared enough to need recovering. From what? He texted back, playing dumb. You can't fool me. Okay, Greg responded. Yeah, I'm good. Need more courage, I guess. You need Brian Reinhardt's brain. He's not afraid of anything. Greg laughed. Good point. Brian Reinhardt was the football team's star running back. He texted, I could use his legs too. Uh, fast for running away. Lol. <laughs> How about Steve Thornton's shoulders, powerful enough to dump scary things? Greg laughed again, but Hady was on to something. If Greg was going to do what he'd set out to do, why didn't he pick and choose what he wanted? Okay, he typed in, but I want Don Waring's chest, too, then. Greg grinned at the idea of constructing a body from football players' parts. He needed a good face, though, especially if he was going to get a girl to pay attention to him. I want Ron Fisher's eyes, he texted. RGR. I don't know what that means. RGR. Am I just too much of a boomer to know what RGR means? How about uh, Neil Manning's nose? Greg smiled and typed, Ob, I guess obviously. Mouth. Uh, Greg thought about it. He responded, Zach's BFG. Greg smiled. He could picture Hades' big frickin' grin. 
pair. I like my own, Greg replied. Ego much? Greg laughed. GG. Greg typed in BFN. Greg flopped onto his bed. <laughs> All of this means nothing to me. <laughs> what zoomers they are. Uh, Greg flopped onto his bed. He picked up his journal and the book on the zero point field he needed to check. This is more my kind of stuff. He glanced over at his plants before he started reading. They were the key to this, weren't they? They made the exchange he just had with Haiti more than just a silly game. Well, they were at least the catalyst. Learning about Cleve Baxter's experiments is what had launched him down the road he was on. But the plants wouldn't help him tonight. He needed to review what he knew about random event generators or REGs. He flipped through his book. Yes, there it was, machines and consciousness. Cause and effect. He put the book down and skimmed his last journal entry. He hadn't misinterpreted what he'd gotten, had he? No, he didn't think so. He was either on the right track or he wasn't. And if he wasn't, he didn't think he wanted to know what track he was on. The way he'd been drawn to that place couldn't have been a coincidence. The storm hung around another day, but it fizzled out late su Sunday night. Power came back on. School was in session as usual Monday morning. Uh, Greg endured the first half of the day and was relieved when 1.10pm finally rolled around and he got to Advanced Scientific Theory. Advanced Scientific Theory was an AP class reserved for freshmen who had won science fair prizes in the previous two years. The class had only 12 students. It was taught by a visiting teacher, Mr. Je Jacoby, or Jacoby, I'm going to say Jacoby, who also taught at Grays Harbor Community College. Grays Harbor, huh? Oh, I don't know. Is Grays Harbor... Where is Grays Harbor? I don't know. I can't remember. Uh, this is good for geography of, like, Phasma Frights, though. Uh, as always, Greg was always the first one in the classroom. He sat in the front. Only Haley would sit near him. Mr. Jacoby was pra practically bouncing at the front of the yellow-walled classroom when the bell rang. Tall and lanky, but so full of energy, he reminded Greg of a long-coiled spring. Mr. Jacoby was an enthusiastic teacher who was undaunted by disinterested students. Greg loved science, all science, not just tech, and his passion had earned him the title of teacher's pet. Mr. Jacoby always lectured while darting around the front of the classroom like he had bugs in his pants. Sometimes he scribbled on the whiteboard, more often he just rambled. But it was interesting stuff. This small room, filled with tall wooden lab tables and counter-height chairs, was one of Greg's favourite places in the school. He loved the periodic table and the constellation posters on the walls. He loved the smell of the fertiliser that fed the hybrid plants growing at the back of the room. It made him think of science and learning. Running a hand through unruly red hair, Mr. Jacoby began, In quantum physics, there is something known as the zero-point field. This field is scientific proof that there is no such thing as a vacuum, no such thing as nothingness. If you empty all space of matter and energy, you still find, in subatomic terms, a bunch of activity. This constant activity is a field of energy that is always in motion, subatomic matter constantly interacting with each other. Uh, with, yeah, with each other. Uh, Mr. Jacoby rubbed a freckled nose. Are you all with me? I am. <laughs> I remember learning about this sort of thing. I love it. Uh... Greg nodded enthusiastically. Hadey, who sat next to him at the three-person lab table, nudged him. Hey, this is your shtick. Greg ignored him. Mr. Jacoby grinned at Greg and took his nod to represent the entire class, which was unwise, but Greg was fine with it. Good, Mr. Jacoby con continued. So this energy is called the zero-point field because fluctuations in the field are still found in temperatures of absolute zero. Absolute zero is the lowest possible energy state, where everything's been removed and there should be zero... No, there, there. There should be nothing remaining to make any motion. Make sense? Yeah, uh, zero Kelvin. <laughs> um, Greg nodded again. Great. So the energy should be zero, but when they measure the energy mathematically, it never actually reaches zero. There's always some remaining vibration due to continued particle exchange. Still with me? Yeah, it, there's an asymptote at, at zero, which means it can never get to zero. <laughs> Sorry, I'll stop. Uh, I'm such a nerd. Greg nodded enthusiastically. He'd had no idea Mr. Jacoby was going to talk about this today. What were the odds? He grinned. There were no odds. It was the field. He was so excited that he missed the next few minutes of Mr. Jacoby's lecture. It didn't matter. He knew this stuff. He did tune back in, though, when Kimberly Bergstrom 
uh, raised her hand. Well, he sort of tuned back in. He heard her question. Is this just a theory? He also heard the start of Mr. Jacoby's answer. Not entirely. Consider this scientific trend before the scientific revolution. That's where Greg tuned out again. He got caught up in watching Kimberly. Who wouldn't? Long inky black hair, amazing green eyes, prettier than any model Greg had ever seen. Greg felt himself flush and he whipped his gaze away from Kimberly before someone caught him staring. Too late. Haley nudged him again and when Greg looked over, Haley made goofy goo goo eyes at him. Greg shifted his attention back to Mr. Jacoby. As usual, Greg was the last one out of the room when class was over. Mr. Jacoby smiled at him as Greg gathered his stuff, and Greg gave another thought to talking to his teacher. Then he felt his phone vibrate. Waving at Mr. Jacoby, Greg pulled out his phone as he stepped into the hallway. He looked at the screen. Hello, Greg. Hey, how are you? How are you? Uh, the phone number wasn't familiar. Greg looked around. Who was texting him? He entered. I'm fine. Who's this? Then he watched his screen. Fetch. Oh, very funny, Haley. Greg muttered. He texted what he said. The reply wasn't what he expected. Question mark for you? What's your question? Uh, <laughs> Greg texted. Why do you leave? Greg rolled his eyes and entered. You're hilarious. T.Y. You answer. Greg felt a tap on the shoulder. You're going to be a. You're going to be late for Spanish, amigo. <laughs> Haley said. Greg whipped around, Haley raised an eyebrow, and Cyril, who stood next to him, took a stuttered step back. Why are you texting me if you're right here? Greg asked Haley. Dude, you whacked? Do I look like you're do I look like I'm texting you? Uh actually no. Haley's phone was nowhere in sight. Greg looked back at his phone. Whoever was texting him had repeated, You answer. Uh Greg looked at Cyril. Did you text me? No. Por que habría? <laughs> Poke here, Abdia. I don't know why you'd text me and stop speaking in Spanish, Greg said. Uh, Cyril ignored him. Venga. He tugged on Greg's sleeve. I hate Spanish, Greg said. Cyril looked past Greg and said, Hola, Manuel. <laughs> I don't know Spanish, okay, so I'm trying my best. Greg turned to look at Manuel Gomez, who had transferred into the school a couple weeks before from Madrid, Spain. Hola, Cyril. ¿Cómo estás? Estoy bien. Tú? Bueno. Oi, Manuel, conozques a Greg? <laughs> this is so much fun. Cyril asked, gesturing at Greg. No. Manuel smiled at Greg and held out his hand. Encantada de consorte. Conocerte. He just said, nice to meet you. Gre Cyril told Greg. Lo sé, Greg said. I'm not a total Spanish spaz. Close enough. Cyril said. Manuel laughed. Greg tiene muchos problemas con el, con el español. I was doing so well. Oh my gosh. Greg tiene muchos problemas con el español. <laughs> I'll take it. Cyril told Manuel. I'd be happy to help you with Spanish anytime. Manuel said to Greg. Want me to give you my number? He held up his phone. Sure. Greg swapped phones with Manuel and they exchanged numbers. Yo, Mousy, someone called out to Cyril. How's your mum doing? She's still a freak like you? Greg turned and faced Cyril's bully. He cleared his throat and said loudly, Remember this, Trent? Three things in life are important. The first is to be kind. The second is to be kind. And the third is to be kind, so said Henry James. Trent shoved Greg. You're a freak. As Trent sauntered away, Haley nudged Greg. You read too much. You don't read enough. In unison, they said in, exas in exaggerated deep voices, The universe is in balance. They bumped fists and finished with cha. A couple of kids in the hall deliberately jostled Greg and one of them said, You guys are weird. I'm proud of it, Greg sang. Haley shook his head. Manuel touched Greg's shoulder. I like Henry James too. He grinned and held out a fist. Greg bumped fist with Manuel. Then, shoving his phone in his pocket, Greg followed Cyril and Haley to Spanish. He wasn't going to talk to them about the text now, but he didn't stop thinking about the texts either. If neither Haley nor Cyril sent them, who did? Was someone else in the restaurant with the boys on Saturday night? 
Is this what that slamming door was? Or did someone see them leave, then go in, and then find Fetch? The idea that they'd been watched made Greg's, screen, uh, made Greg's skin cruel, but the idea that they hadn't been watched made all their hair stand up on Greg's arms. Could it be? He wouldn't think about it. Not yet. By the next day, he was thinking about it hard. In that time, he'd received a dozen texts from Fetch. Now, by, the, by now, he realised the text had to be from the animatronic. They couldn't be from anyone else, because no one else could know anything, everything Fetch was texting about. Obviously, Fetch was dialed into Greg, so to speak. It quickly became clear that Fetch was synced with Greg's phone, and he was trying to live up to his name. When Greg told Cyril he needed more time to do homework, Fetch sent Greg a link to a time management article, and a clock app appeared on Greg's phone. When Greg looked up REGs online, he received a link from Fetch to an article about the latest research into intention and REGs. When Greg finished the article, te uh, Fetch texted 01001111, 0110101, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 0110111, 
I have no idea what any of that meant. Fortunately, Dan knew Greg wasn't as adventurous with food as he was, so he included a couple of ordinary tuna salad sandwiches too. They set up their picnic in the living room, in front of the big picture window overlooking the dunes and the ocean. You could barely see the ocean through the rain, one shade of grey merged with the next. Jake, four years old, loved the picnic, but he wasn't keen on the huge rubber spider that lurked near the edge of the picnic blanket. He was so agitated that Greg suggested that they, pulled, that they put the picnic on hold. He got out two spatulas and made a big production of scooping up the spider and putting it in a sealed plastic bag. That wasn't enough for Jake. Out! he demanded, pointing a chubby finger toward the door. So Greg put on his rain jacket and went out in the rain. While Dare and Jake supervised from under the shelter of the house, Greg dug a hole in the mud and buried the rubber spider. Satisfied, Jake ate the rest of his picnic lunch without comment. Good job, boyo, Dare said. Greg enjoyed the praise. He, ne he sure never got any from his dad, who as usual was working. When Dare was around though, he didn't seem to mind his father's disapproval as much. His uncle made everything seem better. A couple days before Christmas, Greg and Haley were talking on the phone about Trent. He's such a jerk, Greg said. He laid on his bed watching his plants, sending specific thoughts to them like one might send to an REG. Just like in Cleve Baxter's experiments, his plants seemed to be responding well to his latest intentions. I don't really pl uh, pay attention to him, Haley said, but I know he freaks out Cyril. Yeah, he needs to be pranked, Haley said. I was thinking spiders. I overheard him the other day telling Zack he's afraid of spiders. Greg laughed. Seriously? I've got a rubber one buried in my backyard. Maybe if the rain stops, I'll dig it up before I come over. Yeah, do that. <laughs> it would make a nice surprise in his stocking. Greg waited a few hours, but the rain didn't let up. It thrummed relentlessly on the roof. If Greg hadn't promised Haley he'd go over to wrap presents, he wouldn't have left the house. But he promised... So he geared up for the rain and stepped outside. He almost uh, screamed when he looked down and saw a huge spider covering the well of welcome friends on his mother's jute doormat. Jumping back, he stared at the spider, realising now what it was. Greg felt his pulse accelerate. This was not possible. But there it was. It was the rubber spider he'd buried, still in its now muddy plastic bag. No one except Dare and Jake knew where that spider was. Jake and his family had gone to Hawaii for Christmas and Dare was on a ski trip with friends. Wish you could be here for our white Christmas, boyo, Dare had said on the phone the night before. Leaning over and picking up the plastic bag by the corner as if it was a deadly creature in and, in and, out, eh, in and up itself, Greg held the bag in front of his face. Were those teeth marks along the bottom edge? He dropped the bag. His phone buzzed. He sucked in his breath and fumbled for his phone. Merry Xmas. Merry Christmas to you, Fetch. Greg entered while trying to ignore the fact that his fingers were trembling. He didn't wait for a reply. Ignoring the urge to throw the phone into the shrubs at the edge of his yard, he shoved it back in his pocket. It was time. He had to talk to his friends. The day after Christmas, the boys gathered in Greg's room on the bed. Greg sat with his back against the navy blue cushioned headboard, his friends sprawled next to each other at the foot. He glanced around the room, taking comfort in his familiar surroundings. Posters of movie musicals alternated with puppy posters on the walls, and two shelving units stuffed with books flanked the window that looked out toward the ocean. The sky outside was matte grey, as if an artist with no sense of depth had just slathered paint across the horizon. On the wall opposite the window, his plants sat in rows of shelving under a low-hanging bank of grow lights. His antique roll-top desk, a gift from Dare, sat next to the door. A plate of gingerbread cookies Greg had baked two days before sat in the middle of the bed. Grabbing a cookie, Haley asked, What's this urgent meeting about? Yeah, Sewer squeaked. I was going to go to the day after Christmas sales with my mom. Haley shook his head. Seriously, dude, do you listen to yourself? You might as well wear a t-shirt that says, make fun of me. Greg threw a dirty sock at Hady. Leave him alone. If he likes to shop with his mom, he likes to shop with his mom. Hady gave Greg a mock bow. You make a point. He nodded towards Cyril, this time for real. Sorry. It's okay. 
In the silence that followed, Greg weighed how he was going to explain everything. Well, maybe he wasn't going to explain everything. Maybe just some things. For sure he had to tell them about Fetch. He looked over to his nightstand, which held stacks of books, papers and his phone, still receiving texts from Fetch. His most recent, an hour before Cyril and Haley showed up, was, Do you need food for meeting? No thank you, Greg texted back. He took a deep breath and wrinkled his nose at the scent of the lavender air freshener his mother had put some place in his room. He'd been looking for it, but hadn't found it yet. He preferred the smell of his sweaty clothes, thank you very much. Okay, so there's no way to say this, but to say it, he began. Hadey and Cyril looked at him. Fetch has been sending me texts. His friends stared at him. They blinked in unison. Who's Fetch? Hadey asked. Wait, you mean that dog thing? That prize from the pizzeria? Is this a joke? Cyril asked. Greg shook his head. He picked up one of the stacks of papers from his nightstand. All the text messages he'd printed out and held it uh, out to Cyril. Look, he waited while Cyril and Haley scooted together so they could read the text at the same time. This can't be real, Cyril said. His voice was even higher than normal. Haley grabbed the stack of printouts and flipped through them. He glanced at Greg, then said to Cyril, He wouldn't prank us like that. No, I wouldn't, Greg said. Want to see my phone? I'm smart, but I'm not smart enough to spoof texts on my phone. Haley shook his head. He abruptly stood and started pacing in a tiny circle on Greg's blue and maroon braided rug. It must have synced with your phone, dude, Haley said finally. Greg nodded. Yeah, except... Whoa, wait, Cyril said. I'm not a techie, but I don't see how something as old as that animatronic dog could sync up with a modern smartphone. That's just not possible. Obviously it is, though, Hades said. It's not just sinking. Greg reached for the muddy plastic bag containing the spider and held it up. He felt like he should say, Exhibit A, but didn't. What's that? Cyril shifted away so fast he fell off the bed with a thud. Greg suppressed a laugh while Cyril jumped up. Sorry, Greg said. It's not real. He told them the story of the picnic and then the appearance of the unearthed bag on his doorstep. Cyril gaped at him, then looked from Hady to Greg and back to Hady. No way. Let me see that. Hady snatched the bag from Greg's grasp and examined it. Those are teeth marks. No way, Cyril repeated. Way, Hady said. It's like my plants, I think, Greg began. It was time to share what he was sure was behind all of this. Hady and Cyril stared at him. What? Hady asked. Have you heard of Cleve Baxter? Greg asked. Pretty sure they hadn't. They shook their heads. He was a, poly, uh, sorry, a polygraph expert who started doing experiments with plants in the 1960s. Okay, Hady said. So what? So in the 1960s, Baxter had the idea to hook up a plant to a polygraph machine to see if he could measure how long osmosis took. Although he didn't learn a thing about osmosis, he stumbled upon something else. Something super cool, Greg stopped. Cyril and Hady were still staring at the spider in the bag. They probably weren't even listening to him, and even if they were, Greg realised there was no way he was ready to tell them his theory. What if someone was in the building with us, and now they're watching you? Cyril asked, confirming that he and Hady hadn't been listening. What, like a stalker? Hady asked. And he bugged my phone or something? Greg asked. That's just crazy. But wasn't any crazier than what he thought was going on? 